So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what it means to be an Irish Ranger. Let's get into it. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Luke. If you don't know who I am, I'm a servant sergeant within the British Army and more specific, I'm an Irish Ranger within the Royal Irish Regiment, which is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Right, who we are then as the Royal Irish Regiment? That is our name, so our official title, and we trace our roots back to as far back as the 16th and 17th centuries. And in between then, all the sort of different regiments uh, and, and units that were formed have all sort of amalgamated into what you see today, which is the Royal Irish Regiment. We have got two battalions, a first battalion and the second battalion. Our second battalion is a reservist battalion. So if you are a reservist and you live in the north of Ireland, that might be up to you. And I would highly suggest you go there over any other reserve unit. I will link a video up here about reservist life if that's something that interests you. Be aware that is slightly outdated and I will be looking to revisit that. Mindset with us within is operationally focused. And it goes without saying, not taking anything away from the antecedent regiments and stuff because there'll be so much operations to talk about. I'm going to be talking more specifically the last two decades as we have been deployed near enough somewhere every couple of years. We're all the way back, right back to the year 2000. We were sort of finishing off on Up Banner in Northern Ireland and then transitioned into Telex or Iraq. Then it was Afghanistan and more specific Helmand Province. Back in 2006, uh, you know, Irish Rangers were the first boots on the ground in Helmand Province along with their, at the time, partners uh, within the Parachute Regiment and ev everyone else who comes within 16 Airsoft Brigade because that's a brigade we were back then. If you want to know any more information about that, a really good documentary which I highly recommend you look at is one called Heroes of Helmand and that really goes into depth of what the Irish Rangers and indeed the Airborne Forces went through during the tours of 2006. So after that then they went on to 2008 Harrogate which <laughs> and then Herrick 13. Let's start extracting, keep going! <laughs> and then that was sort of Offensive operations were drying up around 2014. We made the transition to train, advise, assist. We then went to Kabul, Afghanistan on Op Toro, it was called, for, for two more tours. So that there then shows just the wealth of operations that we have just within these two decades. And amongst all that, you will have loads of different small term training teams, such as anywhere across Africa and all over the flipping place. And currently right now, uh, Op Nukem, which is a new Mali operation, the UN peacekeeping one, uh, we are heavily involved in that too. And we will see people deployed there pretty soon. Uh, we also will have now, some of these aren't operational deployments, but overseas exercises to Texas, so exercise Rattlesnake, which is getting you away. There's an opportunity there. We also have other deployments then, uh, regards to anti poaching. So, that's something you may have never thought you would have got to do join the army. Well, our strangers are going to go away and do that this year. And they've also got another overseas exercise in Oman. So, I'm telling you now, as a battalion, so a regular battalion, which is if it's fully manned, 510 people. That is everything that's happening within the sort of this first 12 months that we're in now and that's going to continue to happen is in the pace of life on into next year and then the year beyond. So if you're something who wants to get amongst something and wants to keep busy and wants that sort of stereotypical I'm going to travel the world with the army, I'm telling you now, you're going to get it here. I am not taking it away from the rest of the army or any other infantry regiments or any other corps because you will get to do it out there as well. But what I will say is some of them other regiments and some of them other corps and units are bigger in size. So naturally when an opportunity comes to them they will have more people more people competing to get there so away from the deployment set is ethos this is a really strong thing i get asked so many times whether it be on instagram or on here you know what makes it royal irish different what it means to be an irish ranger and all the rest of it you know, why is it so different where you are and i can always struggle to answer it because i can never really put my finger on it but because I've been asked that many times now and I've been sort of trying to think of why, I've just come to the conclusion, this is my very own personal conclusion, is ethos. And I think it's all that operational experience we've had which has led us to be operationally focused and even though that all them sort of kinetic tours aren't happening now, the next generation are so keen and so eager to get away in different operations and can and take all these opportunities they get and they go away with this ethos of the Irish Ranger ethos. It's something that's, like I said, it's happened. It doesn't matter what the regiments were called. 
over the last couple of hundred years. It's that same ethos that has come the whole way through hundreds and hundreds of years and has had different experiences, it's had different sort of deployments and all this sort of stuff has been molded up into one big thing is what you see today currently in the modern day army. So another thing would be our officer to soldier relationships. They're so unique, they're different. You're not gonna experience that anywhere else in the UK Armed Forces. I'm just telling you now, I don't know what it is or how it has come to be, but it's always been the way it has ever since I've known. And I'm pretty sure prior to me or any veterans or anyone who's watching will probably say it's the exact same. I don't know if it's the sort of culture that we have back in the island of Ireland and you take that culture and then you switch it up in sort of military terms and then that's what, why it is. Who knows? But what I'll say, it's a really, really good one. So if you are a soldier or you are an officer and you're really looking at somewhere where you want to fit in, where you want to work hard, where you want to deploy, where you want to become part of a really strong ethos, this potentially could be an extremely good route for you to take. So if you got any value from this today, please drop it in the comment section below or smash that like button. And I'll leave a few more videos here to motivate you about what it is to be an Irish Ranger. And I will see you again on the next video.